A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go be close. I'm Silver. Zeb Wilton had led a caravan of covered wagons from the east. When an especially desirable campsite was found, it had been Zeb who persuaded the others to remain and settle. The town that sprang up became known as Wiltonville, and it was unlike any other western community. Zeb Wilton and his friends remained aloof to influences of the surrounding towns. They refused to adopt western habits and customs. They made their own laws and rules, generally dictated by old Zeb, and Nate Parker served as marshal to enforce those laws. Hold on there! Rein up! Oh, 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 oh. Rein up there and dismount. Steady, what? You got a badge of some sort, Dirk. Uh, what's the badge mean, mister? Means just what you think it means. I'm the law in Wiltonville. Well, me and Dirk are glad to meet you, law. Uh, the name is Parker. Nate Parker. Do you two plan to stay in Wiltonville for any time? We might hang around for time. Why do you ask, Mr. Law? Or, uh, I should say Parker. If you stay in town, you'll have to hand over those sidearms. Sidearms? You must mean our guns. That's right. Now, hold on, Lawman. I don't hand over my shooting iron to no one. Take your choice, stranger. Hand it over or keep riding till you're past the town. It's a local ordinance. No sidearms are allowed. Well, if that don't be... Hold on, I remember now. I heard about this place. Wiltonville. Old Zeb Wilton don't tolerate anyone but Easterners. Don't like strangers, and especially Western gents. What's the matter with him, anyhow? Sorry, gents, I don't make the rules, just enforce them. No guns allowed. Well, what's Wilton got against Westerners? Well, at the start, he was just suspicious. Then cowhands began coming here on payday. When they found out he didn't want them to carry guns, they shot things up. They do it every so often. And every time they do it, Zeb gets more set in his ways. You let them bring guns into town? Well, when 20 or 30 of them come at once, what can I do about it? I see. If you're going to ride right on through, you can keep your pistols. Well, we'll stop for a time. Here's my six gun. And yours over, Mix. But Dirk, and you're over. I'm dry. I want to stop and rest. Well, all right, then. Here you are. Yeah, I'll have the weapons in my office, gents. Pick them up before you leave. Oh, boy, hold. Come on, Mix. I see some other horsemen heading this way. You aim to take their guns, too? I do, if they want to stop in town. Steady, boy. <laughs> Craziest thing ever heard of. <laughs> get up, get up. 
Nate Parker watched Dirk and Mix as they rode toward the center of town. Then he turned to appraise another pair of horsemen who approached. He saw that an Indian rode the paint horse and a tall white man rode the other. He didn't know that this was the Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise instead of the familiar mask. Rain up there! Hold on! Stay where you are. You needn't be so enthusiastic. You stop. Huh? Uh, yeah, so we see. I suppose you want our guns, a marshal? My name is Parker, Nate Parker, and I... Uh, oh, you said marshal. Uh, thanks. Get the law on your gun, Toto. Uh, Here you are, Parker. Say, you seem to know the rules of Wiltonville. Your town is getting a reputation. Do you think Zeb Wilton will ever learn to appreciate the West? Uh, not while every cowhand in this part of the county comes here to make the Welkin ring on payday. Perhaps they do it because they know it bothers Mr. Wilton. Uh, sure gets under his skin. It's too bad he's so prejudiced. He try to understand Western uh, might... He's been worse than ever since Jim Hawkins showed up. Oh. Who is Jim Hawkins? Young rancher. He's been trying to make love to Jane Wilton. That's Zeb's daughter. Oh. Trouble is, Jim is a Westerner, and that's one too many for Zeb. Well, we'll stop at your office for our guns when we're ready to leave town. And they'll be waiting for you. Well... Say, why don't you call on Zeb? You don't talk like a cowhand. Bet he'd be glad to know you. We'll see. Come on, Tullo. No, no. Come on, Tullo. Did you see where Dirk and Mix went? Ah, uh, there. Down the road to the livery stable. I want to know what they're up to. The law want them? They've been smart, Tullo. The law has nothing against them. Yeah. Uh. I wonder if they know that Wilton acts as banker for the people who live in town. Him banker? No, not exactly, Toto. But he keeps everyone's cash in the safe in his store. There's probably enough money in that safe to make a worthwhile haul for Dirk and Mix. We watch Crook, huh? You keep an eye on them, Toto. I'm going to Wilton's store. I want to see what sort of a man he is. Ah. He should be taught to appreciate the West and the people who live here. As pretty as a painted wagon. Jim, please, Jim. If my father finds you here, then... Well, if he comes in, he'll sure shoot and find me here. Fact is, I came to town on purpose to see old Zeb. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, honey. Is that the way to welcome the man you're going to marry? We, we can't. We mustn't see each other anymore. <laughs> oh, Jane. I mean it. You, you've got to stay out of town. Father told me that if you ever came here again, Your he... paw's got some mighty twisted notions, honey. And I came to straighten them out. You can't. You can't reason with him. No one can. Oh, Jim, it's no use. Where is he? He's just gone to the shed and back. He'll be coming in here any minute if he finds you Honey, here. I'm going to tell the old catamount that you and I are aiming to get married. Oh, no, no. Well, that's true, isn't it? It'll never work, Jim. Never in the world. I think he's coming. Please go. He's in the back room. Hurry while there's a chance. After riding all the way from my ranch, I'm going to see him. Oh. Hello, Mr. Wilton. Yeah. You. That's right. Hawkins. Jane, what did I tell you? Oh, Dad, Jane I... Jane told me you wouldn't welcome me, but... Well, I stuck around because I've got a few things to say. I won't hear him. Get. Now, just a minute, Mr. Wilton. Jane and I love you, I'd have stopped wanna... Jane seen you a long time ago if I'd known you was a rancher, a cowman. Now get out of my store. Dad, please. You keep quiet. Go on, Hawkins. Give it, get out or I'll horse you. Don't you want to wait on that customer that just came in? I'll finish with you first. Why do you hate Westerners? Let me get that horse whip. I'll show you. Jim, please go. He means I'll it. I'll take it easy, honey. I'll How are you going look. to get out of my store? I'll go when I've had a chance to talk to you. We'll see about that. Now, you better give me that whip, you hot-headed old fool. I'll show you. That's enough. I'll Just a minute. Just a minute. You let go of my arm. Let go of me, do you hear? Steady. This is none of your affair. I'll handle my own fight, stranger. There'll be no fight. Let me have that whip. You'd better go, Jim. I came to talk to that old it's fool. It's too late I'm... to talk. Get out. Please, Jim, do as he says. If I get the chance, I'll beat you within an inch of your life. Uh, I'll come back when he's calm down. If he comes back, I'll... Let, let me go. All right, Will. You... Why'd you have to interfere? Who are you? You offended that no-good cowman? I never saw him before. Why'd you grab my arm? 
Why didn't you mind your own business? Dad, please. Whipping that rancher wouldn't help things, Wilson. Hey, you don't talk like a cowman. Are you from the East? Well, almost everyone around here came from the East. A few years ago, there was no one but Indians in this territory. Outside of this town, everyone's ham, scam, and worthless. They're always looking for trouble and toting guns in the hope of finding it. Wilson, those men conquered this country, made it safe for you and your friends to live here. Ah. Uh, if you get acquainted with them... Well, I won't, the gun-crazy galoots. They have to carry guns, Wilson. Many a time, they have to defend their cattle against thieves or wild animals. It's none of my affair what they do outside of town. They don't have to come here like a pack of savages whenever they get paid. Have you ever seen boys when school closes for the summer? They're not boys. They're grown men. You'd be surprised to know how young some of those cowboys are. You'd also be surprised to see how hard they work between paydays. That's no reason for them to shoot up the town. I won't stand for it. You uh, haven't been able to stop it, have you? Well, maybe not. But I'm dad blasted if I'd be friends with him. And I sure as thunder won't have one of them caught my daughter. Very well, Wilson. We'll see. Well, that's settled. Now, mister, what do you want? Nothing more. You come into the store for something, didn't you? Yes. Well, then, what... I have what I came for. Otto, did you find out? Uh, those two fell apart a gang. A gang, huh? Uh, come here, look town over. Where are they now? Then leave, go join gang. That's our cue, Mount up. Uh, it's a big fella. Uh, hey. One silver. Come on, scout! It was an hour later when Dirk and Nix reined up oh, in a dense oh, woods where their gang was camped and waiting. What'd you make that? What'd you learn? What's that town like? Uh, uh, quiet down, boy. So as Dirk can tell you. Yeah. <coughs> Boys, that town's all that we heard it was. Yeah. Got an old man for a sort of a marshal. His name's Nate Parker. Yeah. He stands at the entrance of the town and disarms anyone that rides in. That is true that no one packs a gun in Wiltonville? True as I'm standing here. I never have believed it. It's likewise true that all the cash in town is kept in Zeb Wilton's store. How much is there? Yeah, we couldn't find that out. But there must be a tidy sum. He's got the only strong box in town, you see, boys. Everyone has him take charge of their cash. Who'd you get the facts from? Are you sure they're true facts? Yeah, they're true enough, Baldy. We went to the livery stable, stalled around till we got acquainted with the old coot that runs the place. <laughs> he told us everything. Yeah, the question is, how can we get that cash? I got it all worked out, boys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, you see, when a bunch of cowhands from one of the ranches get paid off, they ride into town to celebrate. They visit the barber shop, then pack away a meal in the restaurant... Then go to the cafe and stay there until they're broke. What about it? They know how old man Wilton feels about Westerners. So they go all out to get under his hide. Oh. They ride into town at full speed. Ten or fifteen strong. Empty their guns in the air. The old marshal can't stop them. They keep their guns. Nothing anyone can do about it. Wilton knows that there'd be serious gunplay if he made a move against them. So he just sits tight and sweats it out until they're gone. He and everyone else have learned that the cowhands won't make serious trouble. If... They're left alone. What's that got to do with us? Well, boys, for once in your worthless lives, you're going to look like working men. Oh, what do you mean by that, Dirk? You're going to ride into town like a dozen cow hands that have just seen payday at the ranch where you work. Ride in hard, keep your six guns roaring in the air. Yell and whooper like you're out for a good time. Then what? While you're doing that, me and Mix will open Zeb Wilton's safe and get the cash. How'll you open it? We can't persuade the old man or his daughter to open it. We'll help ourselves to some of the blasting powder in the store and blow it open. Yeah. Oh, there'll be a howl. But you men will be the only ones with guns. No one will be in any position to interfere with our getaway. Ah, how's that sound, eh? Good idea, Greg. All right, I'm glad you like it. Now, here's the details. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. A single oil lamp burned in the small house where Jim Hawkins lived alone. The light spilled over a book that Jim was reading when he was interrupted by a rap on the door. Hmm. I I wonder who that can be. Well, who are you? Hello, Hawkins. Uh, Miss. Let's close the door, shall we? Uh, See here, mister, what's the idea? How's your back? Huh? My back? Wilton gave you a pretty hard cut with that whip. You know about that? You uh, showed fine self-control. A lot of people in your position would have knocked the old man down. Your voice is familiar. You heard me speak when I grabbed Wilton's arm. That's right. You're the one. Yeah, with that mask, what's the idea? It's uh, sometimes more convenient than a disguise. Do you live in Wiltonville? No, but I'm interested in the town. See, it's the only place around here where the people aren't allowed to carry weapons. What about it? We'll get back to that in a minute. What are you going to do about the girl you love? Now, what's it to you? If she won't marry you without her father's permission, you'll have to get his permission, won't you? Get his permission? Well, that's Not almost... much chance of that either, is there? I can't even talk to him. He uh, acts as banker for everyone in town, doesn't he? I guess so. And he has a lot of cash in his safe. What about it, mister? It wouldn't be hard to get away with that cash. Why are you telling me that? Hawkins... I'm going to lay the cards face up. (laughs) It's about time. I'm going to make a proposition, and you can take it or leave it. Yeah? You know how the cowhands go to town on payday? Mm Mm-hmm. Let's suppose that a dozen or more ride into town at sundown tomorrow. They yell and shout and shoot their guns and create a general disturbance. Well, while that's going on, someone breaks into Wilton's safe and gets a cash. Then it develops that the men with the guns aren't cowboys at all. The members of the gang to cover me are, uh, well, uh, to cover the escape of the safe cracker. You mean you're the safe cracker? Oh, I didn't say so. Well, you've been doing some supposing. What's it leading up to? Wilson might got shot trying to protect that money. If that happened, he'd be out of your way, wouldn't he? You and Jane could get married. You said you were going to make a proposition. Yeah. What's it worth to you to have Wilton out of your way? That's just what I thought you were leading up to, mister. Yes? And I've had my answer all ready for you. Here it is. And here's another. Hold it. You won't fight back with your fists, huh? You go for a gun instead. What did you expect me to do? Well, go on, shoot me. You needn't be afraid. I'm not armed. I don't think it'll be necessary to shoot you. You're pretty well informed, but I don't think you can interfere with my plans. Wilton's too stubborn to listen to anything you could tell him. You just try to go through with those plans and see what happens. Don't bluff, Hawkins. If you think I'm bluffing, you call me. Adios. He hit me in spite of the fact that I had two guns. Oh, he was great. Jim's all right. It's a big fella. <laughs> One silver. late the following afternoon when Dirk and Mix approached the town. There's the old man, still on guard. (laughs) I wonder if he sleeps there at his post. What do we do, Dirk? Rain up and be peaceful? Sure. Gotta get into town to lie low till we hear the boys approaching. Hold on there! That's far enough! Rain up! Oh, 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 oh. Hi there. You remember us? Oh, it's you, Jens. You were here yesterday. That's right. Well, you know the rules. Mm-hmm. Here's my gun. Give him yours, Mick. Sure thing. We came to see Wilton on business. Is he in his store? Mm, he's there, but the chances are he'll be in the middle of an argument. Yeah, how's that? <laughs> well, the young rancher that wants to marry his daughter just went over to see him. Figures to have a talk with Zeb. No, Zeb ain't one to talk to ranchers. <laughs> he horsewhipped the young critter when he went there yesterday. Oh, I see. <laughs> Well, maybe we better go to the cafe and wait a little while. Come on, Mix. Get up. Get up there. It 
was a few minutes later when Tonto and the Lone Ranger, unmasked but disguised as on the preceding day, rode up to the town marshal. Oh, so oh, 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 oh. Well, hi there. So you two come back, eh? Hey, big fella. Yes, Marshal. Well, you know the rules about guns. Yes, we know the rule, Marshal. But we're going to change it a bit. Uh, huh? Instead of handing you our guns, we'll take yours. Hey. Toss the rope, Tonto. Uh, why, let me go. That's it. Pull it tight. Uh, take that rope off. Let me go. You'll pay for this. Keep still or we'll gag you. There. Uh, oh. Hold him. Take it easy, Parker. This has to be done. All be quiet dirty. and listen to me. Tonto's going to take you where you'll be safe until you're needed. I'll hand him up to you, Tonto. Oh, uh, put me down. Let me go. Put me down, I tell you. There he is, Tonto. Take him away. Me. Let me go. Don't. Let me go. I'm... Get him up, Tonto! One silver! The Lone Ranger and Tonto headed in different directions to get out of sight in case anyone appeared on the road. The Lone Ranger reined up a short distance in the rear of Wilton's store, left Silver at ground hitch, and continued on foot. In the meantime, Jim Hawkins tried desperately to get old Zeb to listen to a warning. Now, please listen to me. I won't, I tell you. I won't do it. Zeb, please. I'm not here to talk about James. I don't care why you're here. You get out. You're going to be robbed. Robbed? Threatening me, huh? The man who came here yesterday, he, he saw me. He was masked. It's a robbery. I've done what I can. Are you here again? Look, the real... There he is. That's the one. So you're bothering Wilson again, huh? Yes, I am. I'm trying to tell him you call him. He's wearing a mask. Throw him out. That... You heard that, Hawkins. Come on. Run him out of town. Wilton, he's a killer. Look, he's wearing guns. Let go of me. Can't waste time struggling with you. Uh, don't. I owe you this. Uh, oh, that's it. Hit him again. Hit the no good cowman. It won't be necessary. Come on, Hawkins. We'll go out the back door. Oh, Dave. You stay right where you are, Jane. Jim tried to tell you something. He tried to warn Tricks, you. Tricks, that's all. Thinks he can win my favor. But that other man. Uh, he don't talk like a westerner. But he had guns. He had two of them. Maybe I'll make him a marshal. I... Two men. Howdy. Guess you're Zeb Wilton, huh? That's right. Good. Don't try it. Guns. Sneak guns, huh? Watch the door, Mix. Right. Watch this. What's the idea? Open that safe and be quick about it. Thieves. Why, you... Zeb Lively, or I'll start shooting. Oh, Dad, Jim tried to tell you. Oh, wait a minute. Look, I we got no time to waste. We don't want to do any shooting, but you if we got You don't dare. To... One shot would bring half the town here. <laughs> what would half the town or the whole town do about it? We're the only ones with guns. Oh. That's so. Now move fast, there'll be a couple of murders. Then we'll bust the safe open. Ah, I'll open it. But, Dad, everyone's money is... I got no choice, Jane. No choice. As old Zeb crouched to dial the combination of his safe, he realized his utter helplessness. The whole town would be helpless against the two men in the store and the one who had gone out the rear door with Jim Hawkins. Those three men had guns. Yeah. Shred it open. Well, open her up. That's it. Now we'll help ourselves to the cash. Dad, listen to that. Cowmen. Must be a payday in some ranch. Hey, Dirk, they're coming. Uh, come in, give me a hand. Grab some of this folding money. Boys are right on time. Jane, cowmen might help us. They'll have guns. I wonder if we can count on them. Yes, Dad, we can. I know we can count Stand on them. Stand where you are. I still got you covered. Now, listen to me. You can't get out of town with that cash. You hear that noise? Those men will stop you. They, uh, they're they our... are our friends. <laughs> Your friends, eh? Well, that's where you're mistaken. Those are my pals. They're my gang, and they're raising a ruckus so no one will hear you when we clear out. You can yell your head off, and it won't do no good. Got all the rest of the cash mix? Yeah, let's get out. Right. Look, all the men have stopped at the door. Jerk, those ain't our pals. What? Look at them dismounted at the hitch rail. Those aren't our pals. Mix. They are cowboys. Dad, do you hear that? Cowboys, and they've all got guns. Oh, hold it, now right. watch yourself. We're going out the back way. You two are going with us. The first sign of interference, we kill both of you. Grab a girl, Mix. Right. Hi, it on. Hey, what the... Jim! I'll show you. No! Well, how about you? You want one, too? Oh, my God. Drop that gun. Don't shoot. Don't shoot me. It's all right, Jane. This man's on our side. Take your cash, Wilton. Put it back in the safe. Well, oh. and you, who are you? He's all right, Wilton. As soon as I got over being cracked on the chin, he told me he had to let things go far enough so there'd be a clean-cut case of thieving against these two. That's why he dragged me out. Oh, Jim, they might have killed him. Oh, no, not a chance, honey. The two of us are watching every move they made. Hey, here's your gun, mister. Thanks for the loan of it. All right, Jim. Now, hog tie these two. Now, I don't savvy. Wilton, last night I made Jim think I'd be here to rob your safe. 
I also let him know that there would be a gang of crooks rushed into town as if they were cowboys on payday. Well, but those men outside. Those are Jim's friends. He got them together and they waylaid the crooks. Yeah, they're all hogtied like these two are going to be. That's too tight. Shut up, crook. Yeah. They left their work and fought a gang of crooks to help me. I'm sure they did. Ain't they neighbors? Well, I never. Sorry I had to hit you, Jim. There wasn't much time. <laughs> well, that's all right. I had it coming. Didn't I hit you last night? You certainly did. <laughs> How'd you know I'd have some of the boys waylay the gang? Well, Tonto and I watched the trail to make sure of it before we came here. Tonto? Yes. He's been taking care of the marshal. The marshal? Where's that old galoot? Hey! Here he comes through the back door. What's going on here? One, two, three, three. <laughs> there you are, Nate. The prisoners are all tied up like Christmas presents waiting for you. That redskin held me prisoner. He kept me from interfering. Now, this was a job for... Ranchman to handle. Oh, Jim. They, they helped me. Saved everyone's cash because they were neighbors. I wonder if I've been wrong. Dad, if you'll just give Jim a chance, he'll prove that you've been wrong. This is the West. These men are people you should know. Oh, where's that tall man? No, he just went out the back door. Just after I come in. Uh, who is he? Nate, do you know who he is? Yeah. Toto told me about him. That's why I was willing to stay with the Redskin without argument. Is he a Westerner? The Lone Ranger? He sure as thunder is a Westerner. Uh, Jim. Yeah? Uh, let's get to know each other. Your people and mine. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.